So we've just released our annual ranking of the top colleges in America. This is a really interesting list because there are other, other places do rankings and a lot of their rankings are focused on things like reputation and how much money they spend per student. What we really try and do here is we try and look at colleges as a consumer might look at them. If you were actually going to go out and make the decision, make the college decision, and you're going to be spending up to a quarter of a million dollars over four years to get this degree. We look at things that matter to you if you're going to be spending that kind of money. One is the teaching quality great. Do you, a lot of people graduate in four years? Do they graduate with low debt loads? Do they go on to good life outcomes in terms of do they go on and have careers that make a decent amount of money 10 years out? Do a lot of them win big awards? We don't look at selectivity. This is not a list of the most selective schools in the country, and it's not reputation. We don't look at the schools that have the best reputation. And because of that, we do get some surprises in our rankings. Now, the very top of our list is not super surprising. Number one this year is Princeton, and Princeton is, of course, a fantastic school. Number two is Williams. Um, but there are some schools, some smaller schools. Pomona out in California is in the top 10. Um, and uh, some other schools that you might not think score way better on our list than on other lists, and that's partly because uh, our list does tend to uh, reward small liberal arts schools, and that's partly because the teacher quality, as reported by the students, is better. It makes sense, because if you look at like mega university, the University of Texas at Austin, or University of Wisconsin at Madison, these are fantastic schools, but when you have so many students and so many teachers on them at these places, you're going to have a reversion to the mean. Not all the teachers are going to be great because there are so many of them. This year we also did, and I'm very excited about this, we did our list of the most entrepreneurial colleges in the country. And to do this, we partnered with LinkedIn, and LinkedIn took its uh, database of 20 million college graduates. And what we did was we searched that, that database of 20 million people, and we looked for people that called themselves founders, founders of companies, and that had at least 10 employees. I wanted to get rid of the guy who just graduated from college, and he was CEO of Michael Inc., which consisted of himself living in his parents' basement. The top of this list is who you would expect uh, to some extent. Stanford's number one. Caltech and MIT are very high, Harvard's very high, which makes sense, and I, I'm glad because that means that we were actually measuring something that made sense, but there are also some surprises here. Babson College, which is not a surprise if you know Babson, but Babson College, which is in Wolsey, Massachusetts, um, was number 12 on the list, and Babson is a school that is focused on teaching entrepreneurship. Every entering freshman at Babson is given $3,000 by the school to start a, a company. Any profits they make from that company are in fact donated to charity. And at the end of that academic year, they actually have to liquidate the company, even if it's making money, because they want them to go through the whole cycle of entrepreneurship, of starting and, uh, and selling a company. They seem to be doing very well. 50% of Babson students 10 years out say they're involved in some sort of entrepreneurial activity.